Oh my god, I sweat your armpits. <sighs> nah, nearly. Anyway, we are back. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back on your screens. Back in the same hotel room. Back wearing the same shirt because I'm filming two videos in the same day, so it's what it is. As you can tell by the video, today's video topic is about filters. And I mean, when I say when I mean filters, obviously you're not all living under a rock. I mean Snapchat filters, Instagram filters, any other filters that they can that you can think of, and other apps that I might have missed, but mainly Snapchat and Instagram. So yeah, just to name, just to talk about the title: Are filters ruining our self perception? Simple answer, in my opinion, yes. But we'll get to that <laughs> anyway. So before I start the topic, please like the video for me, subscribe to the channel, engage with me, comment, all of that, all of that. And um, yeah, let's get it done. Early in the morning. From my little bit of research that I'd done, I'd seen that Snapchat filters were introduced back in 2015. Now, a lot of Snapchat filters, a lot of them started with like animals that I think they had like a deer one for a while. I think they had a dog one, obviously the bait dog one that everyone used to bang out or such a basic filter. And more time it started as fun. So they've gone from doing dogs and deers to whatever the rascal this is. <laughs> what is that? It, it, it started out as this is my obviously this is all my opinion. This is this is the linear process of what from my percept from my perspective here. So back in 2017 was when Instagram jumped on the scene and basically blew Snapchat out of the water. Because I can't lie to you, when Instagram tried to do the stories, yeah, I was thinking, nah, stick to pictures, man. You don't need to do all this rubbish. Like, what's all this rubbish? You don't need to do that, nah. And then it turns out, do I even snap like that no more? Not really. Actually, I don't. Actually, I do snap, but I don't watch. I don't watch no one's stories too tough in it. I just post my story and keep it stepping. In. I can't lie. Instagram has blown Snapchat out of the water. Like, no one even snaps no more. It's Boom, in a bit, roll faith type thing, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, boom, 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 two twos now. Ever since, after, after 2017, Instagram took over. And a lot, I noticed a lot of the filters were transforming from like animals and fun stuff, quirky stuff, whatever, or even branded shit or whatever. I could be like Pepsi, Coke, but whatever, to a lot more beauty based ones. Since these filters started coming out, people feel a lot less good about themselves. And I firmly believe that. And yeah, you might be like, yeah, Cam, like, let's not be dramatic, it's a filter. Nah, let's actually be dramatic, <laughs> let's, let's deep it. Like, I'm seeing people not, they will not upload a video or a picture of themselves on their Instagram stories, on their Instagram posts, on their snap, whatever, without a filter. They, they need the filter on there because basically in their eyes, their insecurities, aesthetically, on the outside, so facially, ears, nose, whatever, are eradicated when they use these Snapchat filters or whatever. So their skin might be glowing, their bags might be gone, their eyes might be wider, their nose might be narrower and pointier or whatever, because apparently that's attractive, even though I like my nose fat and snubby and all that shit. It might make them lips bigger, i.e. this Instagram one that everyone's banging out now, the LV, the Louis Vuitton one, whatever it is, where their lips are fuller and shit. Bruh, is this what LV got man looking like? I'm looking like one Vietnamese prostitute or something. <laughs> No, I prefer my natural self. Still <laughs> dead. I've definitely seen some articles in my research about Snapchat dysmorphia. Now, that's basically stems from body dysmorphia disorder or something. Body dysmorphia, BDD or some shit. Or the 21st century of that is Snapchat dysmorphia. And that is literally the disconnect between what you want to look like and how Snapchat shows you versus what you actually look like. And I know, yeah, everyone's been in everyone's been in a situation, yeah, where you're, when you're, you've got a little filter on, yeah, yeah, like that, yeah, looking good, looking good. Then something bugs and glitches, and then it goes back to you, you, it goes back to your face, and then you're like, oh, and then it's, it's like, <laughs> and then you're like, raw, like, I don't look, I, I look no good. <laughs> I actually saw this one female talking about a similar topic. She likened it to when you've got a beautiful picture, like vibrant, hella, an array of colours, yeah, and then you put like the black and white filter on it. So like it's everything's all vibrant and popping out and then it goes boom like bland, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I've noticed around about people's behaviour using filters and like I've seen so many people yeah do the whole basic uh filter and then they'll the next story they'll post is ah oh, that filter really wanna really makes me wanna get lip injections or this filter really wanna makes me get Botox or this, that and the other. And I'm thinking people are really out here trying to make themselves like Snapchat and Instagram filters. 
Why? I knew that I wanted my nose fixed. There's less guilt about undergoing procedures. Five or 10 years ago, people might have brought in the picture of a magazine cover supermodel. Now they're bringing in a picture of themselves, but just in a slightly optimized way, where Facetune or a Snapchat filter will give them a millimeter more of a cheekbone projection or a fuller lip or a straighter nose. It represents a healthier version of body image. So as you can see from that clip, literally, like that just reiterates and echoes the point that man's actually trying to say, like these filters are only exacerbating the issues, in my opinion in my opinion, because obviously, if the filters didn't exist, people wouldn't be comparing an alternate version of themselves to the real version of themselves. People are out here, yeah, literally out here, saving pictures of themselves in filters, and then like, not, and then comparing themselves to like a normal selfie. The normal selfie is you, it's real. You know what I'm saying? Like, embrace that, Embra embrace it. Like, listen, I've done videos on plastic surgery and things like that before. I ain't gonna get into plastic surgery. Listen, if you've got confidence issues or whatever, each to their own in it. Like, the, the younger cam was like, listen, nah, f, 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 f plastic surgery. Everyone should just be happy with themselves. Obviously, the real world doesn't work like that. I, and I, I'm, listen, I'm the first, I'm the last person that can talk about being happy with myself. I've got poor body image, I can't lie, a lot of the time. I struggle a lot with my, my mental health. Uh, so, like, it's a, you know what I'm saying? I can't sit here and, and, and tell anyone, like, not to be self, like, not to be, like, um, that's not what I'm looking for. Unconfident. <laughs> that's not the. That's not a word. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. So out here, like insecure and shit. Like everyone's got insecurities in that. You feel me? So I believe in today's society, 2019 or nearly 2020 now, with the celebrity culture, social media culture, filter culture, there's always going to be comparisons with, with other people. There's always going to be someone better than you. There's always going to be a better version of yourself that you can envisage, envisage in that. But I do believe that people just need to chill out with the filters because at the end of the day, when people use filter after filter after filter after filter, after filter, filter yeah they start to believe that they look like that as well. So that when, again, I'm echoing what I said earlier, but when it comes back to reality and they see themselves in the mirror, they're like, oh, my skin's dry, or this, I've got bags, my lips are too thin, my nose is too fat, like whatever, whatever the deal is. So yeah, mate, I mean, it's, I'd say use it in moderation or just not use them at all. Like, I can't lie to you, I don't use filters like that. Like, I really don't. And actually, I'll tell you, like, I, do, I've got, I use ones, sometimes I use that Snapchat for even the one with the heart, so that's actually low-key free, to be honest. But like, you know what, it makes me look pretty, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> To summarize, I personally feel that Snapchat dysmorphia is very real. I personally think that Instagram and Snapchat filters are damaging the way we perceive ourselves and the way that we compare ourselves to ourselves, compare ourselves to other people. A lot of these Snapchat filters, they tell you what's beautiful in a way. They almost convince you what's beautiful. They might, they, they might, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't really know the intricacies and the science behind it. I'm not gonna sit here and say I do, but I just feel like I just feel like they do. They, I feel like they. I feel like they control what what we think is beautiful. It's a weird one. It's a weird one. But anyway, I'm gonna leave my opinion there. Please drop a comment on what you and your thoughts below and what you think about Snapchat filters and whatnot and Instagram filters. And um, yeah, man, I'm back. Holler at your damn boy. Let's do it.